Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to art, and I am so excited for this art lesson today. It is gonna be about block printing or screen printing. So let's make sure that we have all the materials that you need to have a really great project this afternoon. The first thing that you wanna make sure is that you have a table cover down for this project because it's gonna get a little bit messy, and we wanna make sure that we have a really great cleanup at the end of our project. You're also going to need a foam board. We're going to need two plates of colors with some foam rollers. And if you don't have foam rollers, then you can also use a paintbrush. Um, probably a bigger paintbrush is going to be a great idea. If you have a small skinny paintbrush, chances are the paint is going to dry, which is something that we don't want to happen. So a foam roller is probably perfect or a sponge brush or a bigger paintbrush. Then we're also gonna need a pencil. I've got a paper towel, and then I have some pieces of newsprint paper. It's a really thin paper, and yours might be in a lot of different colors, and I've just got a basic brown paper. It's basically the same material that I use to put down on my table. So you might be curious, what is hiding underneath this foam board well i'm excited to tell you before we begin our lesson so you kind of have an idea what screen printing is about so let me introduce you to dun, 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 the woman dancer with a fan and dun, 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 the actor dancing all right so i normally don't start out by putting artwork on the table that's already been completed by somebody else but i love these two pieces of artwork these are done by a father and son tori kionobu and tori kiyotada they lived in about 1664 which was a really really long time ago you guys but there's something really special about these guys the father tori Kionobu did this print right here called The Woman Dancer with a Fan and he taught his son Kiyotada how to do print screening and block screening and his son did this block print called Actor Dancing. So there's a couple things that I want to point out and this is our inspiration for screen printing and our block printing for today. So what they did is they made pieces of artwork that were literally about this size. They were about four and a half inches wide and 11 inches high and they sold them as souvenirs for anybody that decided to visit um, Tokyo at the time. So if you were a traveler and you came through Tokyo the way that they made their money is they made these two designs, they printed them on wood, you would go to the souvenir shop, you would say, oh man, those are incredible, I want to put those in my home, I want to take those home with me when I go back to Europe or to Italy or wherever I'm going, and you would purchase these and you would take them back home with you. So it was something really revolutionary that hadn't been done yet was to make souvenirs printed on wood that you could take back home with you. So kind of the birth of spring screen printing. So what is really interesting about these prints is that Kiyonobu, the father, made this woman with a fan and all of the lines in this picture are very flowing and curving and moving. So when we look down her dress, we see that her sleeves have nice round lines, that everything is very flowing. The son said, hey dad, you're a great artist, but I'm more of like, a, yeah, I like the arts and the drama, and I'm, I'm gonna do this guy over here. So he did the actor dancer, and all the lines that he did were really sharp and strong, and he did a lot of angled lines and hard lines and a lot of geometry, so we can see a lot of triangles. We can see a lot of rectangles, we can see a lot of lines all over the place. So today we're going to explore kind of both artworks going way back to 1664 and looking at some of the earliest screen printing. So I am super excited. This is one of my favorite, 
favorite art projects. And if you ever get a chance to go to New York and go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, you can find the displays. This is plate 54, plate 53. It's not a dinner plate, but it's a display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And you can go look at these in person. And someday my dream is to actually go there and see them in person. All right, enough talking. I know I talk way too much. Let's get started. All right, goodbye, Tori Kiyotada. Goodbye, Tori Kiyonobu. It is time for us to do our own screen printing. So today, to celebrate those kind of curved lines, we're gonna do a screen print with some basic shapes and we're gonna kind of be celebrating kind of a garden flower pattern. And then to celebrate those harder shapes, we're gonna be doing a screen printing with some geometric forms on it. So how the, how the project looks, excuse me, is we're gonna be using a pencil to press down into our foam board. We cover it with, normally it would be ink, but we're gonna be using a paint. And then we take our newsprint, we press it on top, and normally a press would be between a machine and you would turn this big handle, everything would squish, 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 flat. And then when it comes off, you would have an image of what you want to produce on a piece of paper. And this is how they did some of the first books. So Gutenberg, created the printing press with a colleague and it took him a very long time to perfect the process. So if your picture doesn't come out 100% perfect, don't be discouraged. It's just a lot of fun to give it a try. So I'm going to teach you how to do a couple shapes in the summer garden. Then we're going to flip our project over. And we're going to do some geometric shapes and then we're gonna press our newsprint on that. All right, so let's get started. So simple pencil is what I'm gonna start with. I've got a very sharp tip on this, so I'm just gonna kind of scratch down that sharp tip because I don't wanna poke a hole through. And I'm just gonna dull the tip a little bit. All right, so basic shapes. I'm gonna start with this flower garden. I'm gonna start on one side of my paper and I'm gonna work with some dimensions. So I'm gonna come up a little bit higher and pressing a little bit hard into my foam board. I'm gonna make a wavy line going down into my paper. And then when I run my finger over it, I can feel the depression that it leaves in that foam board. So I want it to be almost like a river or a channel. but I wanna be able to feel where it's flat on the top and then it dips in. Now I wanna warn you, when you do this, hold your pencil as if you were when you're writing. You don't wanna grab your pencil with a closed fist, push in, and you don't wanna drag and dig that pencil because it's going to tear up your foam board and you're not gonna get a really good print. It's just gonna turn into a hot mess and it's gonna ruin your foam board. So we're gonna add some summer flowers to this. Starting at the very top, I'm gonna write the letter U. And then I'm gonna close it at the top with a line. So I'm gonna make a little bell shape at the top of my line. And then I'm gonna put a dot and then I'm gonna check it with my finger. So if I were to close my eyes, I could feel all the indention into the foam. I'm gonna make another line that comes off of my stem. So I'm gonna make about five of those lines. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna check those lines and make sure that I can feel them pressed in. 
At the end of each of these lines, I'm going to make that upside down U. I'm going to close it off and put a dot. So I'm going to put these really cute little bell-shaped flowers. So go ahead and work on that right now. All right, quick tip. You will not be able to erase since we're pressing into the foam board. So don't worry if it doesn't come out exactly like you pictured it in your head. Let's just go with it and have a good time and see what happens once we put the ink on it. All right, so I'm gonna go over those bell shapes with my finger. I'm gonna check to see that all of those dents are in there. All right, next to it, I'm gonna make a curved line going right off my paper. And I'm gonna work on a brand new garden flower. So I'm gonna check that that's indented. So this is a step I'm gonna do every single time. And I'll remind you to do that. At the very top of this flower, I'm going to make a U shape, but instead of being very skinny, I'm going to make it wider. So it almost looks like I put a little bowl on the end of that. And I'm going to set another one on the inside. On each end, I'm going to put a circle. Make a stem coming off. And you can put that stem in any direction that you want. second stem. So at the end of each stem, let's put another flower. So it's two U shapes and little circles at the end. So when we're working on this garden scene, all of the lines that we're doing are mostly curved lines because we're taking inspiration from that very first block printmaking that was done on wood as a souvenir. So we're thinking about those nice long flowing lines. So we've got two nice really tall flowers so I'm going to put a couple smaller flowers down at the bottom so we have different heights in our picture. I'm going to draw an upside down triangle and I'm going to curve it just a little bit at the end so it looks like a gumdrop. And then I'll draw a stem coming down to the bottom of the page. So the stem I'm either going to curve to the left or to the right. I'm just going to give it a little bit of a bend. I don't want it too straight. I'm going to draw two loops for the leaves. And then up above the top, I'm going to draw three circles. One, two, three. Great job. I'm going to do one more of these flowers and let's do it just a little bit higher. So go ahead and draw one more of those exactly the same way, just a little bit higher.
right, so we're going to draw two more flowers. One more flower just at a little bit lower height if you have room. I'm going to draw a curved line. I'm going to make a circle. And instead of attaching the circle to the stem, I'm going to kind of float it above the stem just a little bit. And then I'm just going to draw lines coming out. So it kind of looks like one of the sunshines that you would draw in a picture. I'll draw two little baby stems coming off and then a round circle at the end of each of those. And then if you'd like to, you can draw a couple lines coming off of those. And last but not least, I'm gonna grab my pencil I'm not going to go all the way to the top because I am going to put a leaf right here. I'm going to start my pencil just a little bit down from the top. And I'm going to draw a wavy line that takes me right off the bottom of the page. So up at the top, I'm going to draw a loop. A nice round loop and this is going to be my leaf. I'm going to start at the stem. I'm going to draw a loop for my leaf and it comes right back to the stem. I'm going to space them out pretty far. You don't want them to be too close to each other else it looks kind of cluttered. And I'm going to draw some loops going down the stem of my plant. All right, then on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So you can have them right across from each other or you can put them in between, however you wanna do that. That one's small, I ran out of room. And one more right there. Beautiful. So take a second if you need to and pause the video so that you have time to finish your first drawing for your screen print. I'll see you in a couple minutes and we'll um, work on actually pressing the paper down. It's time to actually do the screen printing or the block printing. So if this was a piece of wood, we would have been carving into a piece of wood, just like they did way back in 1664. But it's a piece of foam, so it's a little bit more forgiving and a little bit easier to use. All right, so we wanna make sure that we are working and not uh, making a mess and being really careful of the neighbors that are around us. So I'm going to take the black paint that I have and I'm going to make sure that I have a piece of newsprint paper next to me that's ready to go. So I'm going to pick out the paper that I need and I'm going to set that next to me. I'm going to set my pencil above me so I don't lose it. And I'm also going to keep the paper towel close by in case I need that for my hands. 
All right, so I've got my newsprint paper. I've got my project and then I have my roller. So I'm gonna keep the handle of the roller closest to me and I wanna keep the sponge part away from me. I wanna make sure that at no time I grab this sponge roller by the sponge because then I'll end up with a really messy hand. So I'm gonna take my sponge roller and I'm gonna load the paint onto the brush. I wanna be really careful that I don't go really, really fast because then the paint is gonna splash everywhere. So I'm just gonna be really gentle. So I go back and forth really easy until the sponge brush has paint on all sides. Then I'm gonna take my project and I'm gonna start rolling it from the top all the way down to the bottom corner, but I am not going to pick my project up off of the table. So I wanna say that one more time just to make sure that you get those instructions. I'm gonna roll the paint over my project, but I'm not going to lift my project up from the table. So I'm gonna put my finger down at the bottom to hold it still, and I'm gonna to start to roll the paint over my project. Just really gentle, because I don't wanna get this on my clothes and I don't wanna make a mess. If I need more paint, I can come and get more paint. The little paint is going to go a long way. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to make sure I cover my foam board. And my paint. My next step is I'm gonna take my newsprint, I'm gonna lay it down on top, and then with my hands, I'm gonna press down and smooth the paper down on top of my board. I'm just smoothing my paper down. And it's kind of cool because you can see the pattern through the newsprint. So I don't want to push my finger in the grooves. And very carefully, I'm going to peel this back. And move this to the side. I'll have my first print done. Oh my gosh, I love that. That turned out so nice. So this is my first screen printing, or if it was a wood block, it would have been my first block printing. And this would be inspired by a block print from 1664 by Kiyonobu which was the woman dancer with a fan and wand, which was this one right here. So I don't know about you guys, but I might be able to print a ton of these and sell them as souvenirs. Somebody might buy them. I could have a whole business, you guys. This would be really, really cool. All right, fantastic. I am super loving that one right there. All right, so let's move on. Go ahead and pause the video if you still need time to work on um, this first screen printing. 
And if you have time, you can try the second one with me. This would be the actor dancing inspiration, Kiyo Tada, which was the son who said, enough with the curves already, dad. Let's do something a little more dangerous. So this one is inspired by Kiyo Tada's actor dancing. Dun, dun, dun. All right, I'm gonna take this lovely print and I'm gonna set it up towards the top of my table to dry. And I'm done with the black paint, so I'm gonna set that over there. I'm gonna take this foam board that I've been using. All of my paint is pretty much dry because as soon as I set that newsprint down, it sucked up all the paint, took it away. So I'm gonna reuse this foam board and I'm just gonna flip it over. Ta -da! So actor dancing. I wanna experiment a little bit just with some geometric forms super inspired by the actor dancer. So what I'm gonna try um, is just something that I kind of have going on in my head. I've never tried it before, but I'm gonna try working in some lines that just move up and down on the page. And I'm gonna try to take some of the patterns that I saw in um, the actor dancers um, block print, which were some rectangles, some triangles, and some squares. So I'm going to take a look at the foam board that I have, and I'm going to kind of divide it into three even sections. One, two, three. In section one, I'm going to try to draw the best that I can a rectangle. And I'll show you an example, and then you can use your creativity to kind of come up with something yourself. So I'm gonna kind of basically do three columns. In the second column, I think I'm gonna start out with a square. Yes, okay, so my square is not perfect, but in my heart, it's a beautiful square. And in my third column, I think I'm going to start out with um, a couple of triangles. I think I'm gonna start out with a couple of long triangles. So the idea is I'm gonna leave a space between my columns and then I'm gonna stack my shapes on top of each other and then see what that looks like in the screen printing. So my next shape here I'm gonna do a slightly slanted square but I'm gonna leave the lines traveling up straight and then here I'm gonna do a triangle. So that as I work up my column, the space between it will be straight. So on the back side, you can play around with some geometric forms, but let's try stacking them in columns and see how that works. That way it has some form to it. And when our eye looks at it, it makes some type of sense. It doesn't just look like kind of random shapes just thrown all over the page. And again, I'm checking for all those depressions making sure everything feels good. And I think for the final shape on my column, I think I'm just gonna make it kind of random. Maybe it starts out like a rectangle and then it comes in on the sides. and has a weird top to it. 
Okay, I like how that looks, the nice big shapes. What can I do over here? Maybe I'll play around with some triangle shapes. Just to fill up that space in there. That's interesting. I kind of went off to the side a little bit. But it still looks pretty cool. So I'm going to stay away from anything that's round because I'm really inspired by the second um, Japanese souvenir print. I notice sometimes when I press into the foam board, I'm trying to direct my pencil to go somewhere and every now and then it catches and then I end up somewhere that I didn't expect to go. So I'm just gonna go with it. I don't know what I'm doing at this point. Huh. Okay, okay, I can live with that, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna check my impressions. I need something here because my column is so tilted but I think it's okay all right so everything feels like it's indented pretty good I've never tried this with geometric shapes before so let's see what happens okay so I've got my picture I'm gonna grab some blue paint because it's just calling out my name. Piece of newsprint. And let's see what happens with blue. So again, I'm grabbing it by the handle. I'm never gonna grab the sponge with my hands because that's gonna make a mess. Very gently, I'm gonna roll the paint onto the roller. Come on, roll for me, baby. Let's give this one a try. Wish me some good luck here. Ooh, pretty color.
Oh my goodness, I love this color. Wow. Keep your fingers crossed, guys. I hope this works with this color. All right. I'm gonna take my newsprint. I'm gonna hold it straight up, set it on top, and press. I can definitely see the lines underneath. This looks like some type of wolf or something. I'm holding my breath. Okay, here goes my thing. Rubbing just my flat hand. Dun, dun, dun. Very curious to see what happens. Oh, it's very sticky. Okay. So this one came out very different with the blue paint. It's much lighter and it's a little bit harder to see, but it still has some interesting things going on. So you can definitely see the column over here much better than I can the column in the middle. And then over here, for some reason, I don't think I had enough paint and the newsprint actually stuck to my foam board. So it almost looks like one of those really, really old treasure maps that there's a hidden treasure that we'll never know where it is because you actually can't see it. So out of the two colors, I would say that I really like how the black one turned out. Maybe not the blue one so much because I think I needed to put a little bit more paint on the foam board. So it really is kind of playing with it and experimenting it a little bit to see what results you like the best. So for me, I'm a fan of how the black looks on this brown newsprint paper, but it's just having fun and experimenting and seeing what you like. It's a great, this is a great way to make Christmas cards. You can take the foam board and you can cut out little tiny pieces of foam board, make a little tiny picture. You can make your initial, make a little print. It's so much fun. So I hope you had a great time I could sit here and do this all day and think of so many fun things to make. Um, we will see you guys soon. I hope you had a wonderful time. Have a great afternoon. Bye, everybody.